from Mr. President's office, uh, we, by our duty, we had to analyze some of these issues. What exactly is the meaning of uh, ethics? What is the role of ethics in individual lives, in community life, in the politics, in the govern governance, in development, in uh, leadership, in trade, etc. And everything we're talking about, human rights, etc. Et and we start with the individual. But this word called ethics is one of the words that have been hidden or deliberately taken away from the perceptions or the analysis of the African leadership. And that's why when we're talking about being divided from the mind and not physically, uh, we need to rethink again. Now, we simply tell everybody because our focus is more from the individual, from the community level, grassroots level, as we see the person rising to whatever height, even beyond AU, United Nations, etc. Now, talking with the individual, we tell the people at home, and uh, now please do understand, that is the word, as you get educated, at home it's good character. In our religious definitions, ethics simply means good character to us. In Islam, that's about the content of Sharia. In Christianity, that's about righteousness. And in our adage, you say that there is no human being with that, there is no essence of human being besides character. And we say, marry not beauty, but character. It means a lot to us. That means we have a, a, a community, a continent, or peoples who have feelings and who are connected to a creator. And they call him by different names. We are religiously conscious, we are culturally conscious, and we are locally, philosophically uh, engraved into who we are, our identities. But to reach out and trust other people is the, is the task we have to face. And one of the things we are saying is that from Nigeria as a leading country, that as we, are being, we accept, is that we need to raise the issue of ethics. What is ethics to individuals? What is ethics as related to all these areas we just mentioned about? And if it is so, we need the education. And we are now in the process of comparative education. What is our city talking about? What, and, and, and which means we are talking of peaceful coexistence. That's simply with that. And when we are talking of the leadership, we are talking of, of, of effective ethical mentoring uh, leadership in politics, in trade. And the other issue I may raise very quickly is the issue of the type of leadership, political leadership that we have that allows on ethical extractions of Africa's resources. Because if we were educated enough and are really honest enough with our consciences, we would enlighten the people, no matter how uh, remote they are, to say, now, we are thinking of Nigeria in the context, or uh, Kenya in the context of the entire continent. And then we we'll edu educate one another. Thank God we are here in AU. Yesterday, one of the assignments that we had to do was to introduce ICD officially, right? You've been doing other things, but I think we took it officially to go to AU headquarters. We were able to meet with the deputy uh, commissioner, commissioner of AU, right? And she came in person. I saw her earlier on and arranged for that. We went there, and that means that ICD is expected to be registered on the long run as... Um, as, uh, to have observer status as an international uh, uh, NGO. And we are, uh, Mark, I, I still, have, I'm not withdrawing my words. We, ICD must have her seat as an observer on the ECOSOC at the United Nations. Because we are dealing with the issues that I, we feel that I, uh, 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 UN is yet to focus on. They have offices on ethics or uh, administrative setup, but what is it that actually, what, what has ethics got to do with the development of human conscience that was mentioned four times in the United Nations Charter? Please check it out. And uh, we, are, we are using ethics as the preventer of the crisis that you and is managing. If we had dwelt more on the prevention of the crisis, we would have learned how to at least to love one another, to trust one another, and do things more uh, equitably, and they will not create wars. Because now, we are now in, Africa is in the process of using more money to buy arms rather than use the funds for development. And in, plus the uh, ethical extractions from the various East and Western uh, developed countries. So this is the situation uh, we are very quickly. And uh, what are we doing in Nigeria about this? What we set up to do is to use cooperative societies that you mentioned. Uh, where's my, my friend here? And, and that to get to the rural areas, we think we cannot talk about ethics and values on empty stomachs, empty pockets, and on skilled hats. We need food. 
we need the the change to get on with our little uh, luxury lives and as well as uh, the skills to keep ourselves sustained. And th what we decided to do is to come up with a slogan. I was, uh, can you spread this to me? Can you share this for me quickly? Now, we'll just show you very quickly. But we are, I'm not going to the analysis. Please, send, uh, Essie, please get me more. Uh, pass it on. Let everybody pass it on. Get me more, please, from the back. Yeah. Yes, go on. We have enough. Everybody, should, uh, we have enough for everybody. And what we've done here, quickly, 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 just pass it on. Just pass it on. Yes, bring some more, bring some more, bring some more very quickly, just to have something. So because the analysis we have here is for us here, but when we get home, to actually get down to earth to do the practice, what we're talking about. What are we doing? I will recommend it, if you so wish, from other African countries, that we are setting up community farms. Because this is the natural assignment that we even have on planet Earth to take care of, to feed ourselves by Adam and Eve, uh, Eve. Is that right? And then we're talking of where we're going to get the skills. And that's where we're the community farms as well as community transformation centers, or you call it development centers. Go around if anybody will have it, right? Please look at the, at the front of the page very quickly. It looks uh, 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 compacted, but we have to do so so that we can keep you reading until when you slip off <laughs> on your beds, right? And what we intend to do is to say, okay, to carry this message we are talking about on the computers and everything, bringing it down to you know, the barest minimum of understanding of our local people, so that they can now take their own destinies in their hands and be bold enough to even correct us, the wrong interpreters of politics and leadership in Africa. We want to do this, and uh, don't mind about everything. You can see what we mean by that. And we want to put up what we call our centers in, uh, in Abuja, in the six geopolitical zones that we have. And at the same time, in our, in, in our local communities, when you turn to the se second page, it tells you about the sort of international values. And we took this in the uh, Federation, uh, is the Peace Federation, uh, World. Uh, Universal Peace Federation, some of these virtues we took and we added some more. So they are universally compiled uh, uh, data we have. At the bottom of it, we can see, we say, we want to be able to teach these values in terms of little films or whatever, uh, storytelling, etc., uh, in our local languages. And here we're saying that if we don't teach this, these, we are going to have problem. you can see in the middle of the, of the page, the content, the problems we are going to have, more of the corruption, more of the crimes, more of the, of the conspiracies against us, more of cowardice, more of loss of our identity or of our values. Because we think values are already there. These are some of the values we are talking about. And at the red thing here, we deliberately put it there, that if we don't dwell and really seriously apply ethics to our lives and our way of governance and businesses, the, we are, the problems we are going to have, but the three Ds, we have your four Ds here, the red thing here. We start with diplomacy, which is the area of the ICD, we to, our relationship with ICD. We're talking about the conflict resolution, the conflict prevention, crisis prevention by our dialogues, etc., diplomacies. Next, that is going to lead, when we are so mature in this knowledge, we have more of better democracy, which universally everybody has accepted, uh, is the authoritarian uh, type of regimental or military uh, uh, sort of administration. Everybody in the world has accepted, no, it's not, that's not the answer. It's ourselves for ourselves by ourselves in democracy. And also, it will, uh, good democracy will bring about equitable development. And when you have equitable development, then everybody is so secure that you, have, you are so uh, valued, you feel that what, you are integrated, you, you are not marginalized. That's when you are going to decide, we are going to spend more money on development than spending the money on military wares. What is, the, uh, what is our national budget on, on, on defense? And we should search our conscience with the politicians, the leaders. And with that, we talk to these people. How, the amount of money we spend on AK-47. Is AK-47 supposed to kill mosquitoes or to do what? Or to, or, or, or to kill who? They are our children. And how, much, how long do we subject ourselves to the manipulations inside and from outside? Being in companies to cheat your country or, or, or leaving your, countries, your country porous. To, uh, to impositions of certain ideas. But I uh, see so we are talking, we are open to compar comparative knowledge and adaptation to our accepted, recognized, and, res and respected 
persons, our values, and our, our, our foci. We wrote to religious leaders, the whole stuff here is out of religious leaders, and what we say that while we should have International Ethics Day, Nigeria will celebrate National Ethics Day. It's going to be on the 21st of March, and we are insisting that it should go to International we should, United Nations should celebrate International Ethics Day. There is a conference already going on by UNESCO, UNESCO, and women are being invited. I don't know whether men are also invited, because last year I was in Czech Republic. In Czech Republic, it has to do with MDG, etc., and peacekeeping, and so on and so forth. And we said, it's, they cannot be talking about global ethics and not linking up to United Nations. This year, UNESCO is doing something about that. And I think I'm going to find the, the invitation to us, Mark, and then you can understand. I think if you think it's relevant to ICD, you'll be welcome. Right? And at the back of it, we have our constitution. Well, whatever it takes, because the absence of ethics is the beginning of all crisis and corruption, etc., and criminality. But we have in the Constitution that in Chapter 2 of our Constitution, they say that the nation, Nigeria, must eradicate all forms of corruption and abuse of power. We may have it in various countries. It also talks about what it, is, it, uh, uh, is it discipline, about transparency, etc., religious tolerance, self reliance, and patriotism. Talking of religious tolerance, I stumbled into a writing, I will, I will soon finish, the ladies and gentlemen, that the letter to all Christians from Prophet Muhammad, please read it, because what we are having now, because of what are influences from outside, the West is giving us another issue information that we must accept homosexuality. The Arab countries are saying that we must accept that Christianity and so on and so forth. We are being, there's so much of negative and is it domineering and I don't know, suffocating vibrations from outside. <laughs> so, and we are saying no. Now, if I give you, please, please go on. If it doesn't go around at the, at the back of it, where would the Savos invite a cardinal? And other no, go on, please, please go on ahead to to serve us to talk about economic issues. Yes, okay, I'm giving. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, big bombs. Yes, yes, keep passing them on. Yes, keep passing them on. If you don't have, we are going to make more copies. Right. And at the back of it, we are, okay, I have more here. Okay, at least let me keep one. Let me keep one to myself. Or any other one? Can you give one to Mike, uh, Mark, please? We'll make more copies for everybody. Right. So we are saying that. Please read it before I finish. And you can ask questions. And this is a believe me, I can assure you, I'm going to make more than one million copies in Nigeria. Let our Muslim brothers outside and inside Nigeria know that the Christians have their culture. Muslims have their culture of faith. And we know how we do our businesses. If there's anything that the Muslims or Christians are doing wrong, let's sit down and say these are our problems and we'll resolve it. But not to feel that every day the churches are being burnt and you will now have people being, uh, 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 being killed. And the nerve to stand up is being weakened. So let African nations know. And we are telling you, ICD and, and AU, and I'm not, I'm not keeping quiet over this. I'm letting this one to, to, to our ambassador here. And let it be known that if this is the right of, of, of Muhammad to the Christians, their rights and how they must be respected. Let the world of Islam, let the world of Christians get to know about it. And at the back of it, you can read why the world invited the Cardinal Onaika from Nigeria to serve us to talk about economic balances and how we are going to apply our faith values to, to this. Now, yes, is it this day? I think it's leadership. Is it this day? This day. Is this day? Thank you so much, my brother. You are more than current than myself. Now, talking of this uh, uh, on, on, on ethical... So International Ethics Day, that's where we are going to ask questions. Because the charters of the United Nations talking about what we are talking about here, integration and unity and so on and so forth. But the businessmen and women from the countries, in, uh, from the West and from the East, are not are doing exactly the opposite of what they signed at the United Nations. Why would Nigeria be fighting war to salvage the country, the country of Sierra Leone or Liberia? And we have people guarding the diamond... Uh, fields. What interest does Nigeria uh, or Africans have to add value to, to the gold, the uh, diamonds, etc., and the precious stones? And this that is saying, Mr. Banker, are you a banker, sir? No. Oh, I thought you said you are from the bank. Well, I see. I beg your pardon. So, yes, right. No. <laughs> 
Anyway, you see, I'm just trying to say that, you see, we, if it's ignorance, we are being enlightened. And this enlightenment is going to continue. And what we decided, we decided to do is to have an ECOWAS round table on the 17th and 18th of March. And we are calling all our ambassadors and other stakeholders in the ECOWAS. Whatever you've said here today, open it up and let's talk about it. Is it the vision by our minds or is it the vision by our egos or by, or by or what? We must discuss at that level. In May, as it is coming to Nigeria to establish, the, I think, the, cha the chapter uh, of Africa in Nigeria. Mark, am I right? Yes. We are having the international conference uh, ICD in Africa, uh, Africa in Nigeria in May, according to the template they, they sent uh, to us in the presidency. And Mr. President is expected to endorse that honor done to Nigeria uh, uh, very soon. Uh, Mr. Mark, I'm so sorry that the, the program of Mr. President's pro, uh, uh, issues in a AU is so choked. But I'm not too sure. Maybe my chairman here, I'm sure uh, you are going to be good friends. You, I don't know what he's going to do. He may have the, the, the chance. If he doesn't, be patient. Be patient. Right? And uh, we are not keeping Mr. President too, too far away, but really his time and his life and good health is precious to us. Right, so just be patient. If you don't see him now, you see him in, in good bounty of time uh, in, in May. Right, so uh, what we did also, we didn't have enough of it, but uh, uh, Mark, please, what we did, the flyers you gave us, we went to Nigeria and we, we, we printed this. I should have had more, but I think I left more in the embassy for our emb um, uh, embassies to know about what we're trying to do. But by the time we get home, we are going to do more. And we sent when you come for the ECOWAS uh, round table. So, anyway. This is, uh, I think, the summary of the report I would give about generally what we are doing what, uh, with ICD, what we are doing with uh, uh, ethics as related to ICD, as related to the issues we, are, we have raised in all the papers we are presenting. But see it as a responsibility. It's our liberty, it's our responsibility to assert ourselves and use our wisdom and intelligence positively, ethically, and be courageous to stand. Because if you, are serious, if, if you are honest about your intentions, heavens have a way of defending you and giving you the courage. Because there is the same. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian, don't, mind, don't blame me. He says, well, what? those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. If you know your God, I don't know, I don't know how you call that God. This is the one that gives the sun every day. He knows you mean well to also be part of the nurture of the universe. He will strengthen you and will defend you and even fight the enemies where you don't know. So we hope we don't have any, any enemies around. We are friendly people. And therefore, I believe we'll be talking more as uh, the conference continues. Thank you so much for your time. What are you talking about? I am by Badidam Jido, originally a Kenyan, but... Um, uh, naturalized British, but uh, still very African. Your Excellency, it has uh, been an honor to listen to you. Not listening to you as um, an advisor of a president, but a mother of Africa. And uh, I appreciate the passion, the enthusiasm, the drive, the sensitization that um, uh, you are bringing to the African table. Africa has been uh, deprived of um, its uh, humanity, its values, and um, it has more or less lost itself. And uh, it needs uh, people of your caliber to restore the integrity, the spirit of Africa towards uh, becoming more, uh, once again, are a people that were proud before. In the whole uh, African um, uh, memory, um, women leaders like you salvaged communities, salvaged nations, and um, restored the honor, and also did awake the conscience of their men to do what is, is right. I'm pleased on what you are doing. And I congratulate you to that. I think um, without uh, delving on uh, the content which has been 
passionately delivered with um, all the passion of a mother, I'll end there. Thank you very much. Gordon Shirim from Nigeria. <clears throat> I want to draw the attention of African Union to the prevailing trend of promiscuity in our society. And secondly, to the negative effect of information system affecting the youth of Africa, mostly the country where I come from, Nigeria. First of all, I want to draw attention to the negative effect of the lifestyles of our young girls ranging from the age of 18 to 28 in our cities. If you go to Abuja, Port Harcourt, Enugu, and other cities, it will attest to the fact that most of the hotels and guest houses are hired by these young girls. And they communicate with their clients through the contact they have made from um, Blackberry, um, what they call it, WhatsApp, and uh, the other one. They have contacts all over the cities. And when they go to these hotels, they pay, they can team up like three girls in one room to pay 10,000 naira or 20,000, as the case may be. And they start, you know, meeting these men to make ends meet. The problem there is one, that the government, or not the government alone, that our social responsibility, we have not been able to do it, to engage all these young girls to a meaningful job. But what worries me is that most of these girls, 90% of them are students. And you can see the negative effect it will give the next generation of people that will govern us. People who cannot concentrate in the classroom, people who cannot attend lectures, but at the time of their graduation, they will keep paying lecturers to acquire degrees. And what, it, what will happen is that their generation will not have people like our sister sitting here, the special advisor on ethics. We end up having people who have degrees, but they don't have knowledge. So I want us to be serious in checkmating this trend. And another one, you can attest with me that 75% uh, or let me say in 24 hours, many of these young girls dwell in pinging for 12 hours and tell me we're supposed to sleep, we're supposed to go to bed and spend at least six hours, but some of them will be pinging till midnight. What kind of society are we expecting in the next generation? So I want the African Union to do something concerning this issue because it borders on this absence of ethics and values in our society. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, for me, I've always listened to her, and uh, each time you listen to her, you will always learn uh, something. We are, we are very blessed to have her. Actually, our nation was named by a woman, so uh, 
if women are performing, we should not be surprised about that. The whole name Nigeria came from Flora Shaw, who was uh, a woman. Uh, the issue I would like to draw our attention here is that, yeah, the struggle between Christians and Muslims is something we should not ignore. Uh, you know, issues of faith is an issue of heart. It's not just something about the head. So I would like to suggest, for your kind consideration, the possibility of developing an interreligious education program so that as a Christian, I need to know what true Islam is about. As a Muslim, I need to know what true Christianity is about. Yeah, when we have Christians' view of Islam, yeah, Christians view Islam in very bad perspective. And Muslims view Christianity in very bad perspective. So I think what will help us is that if we have an education program that teaches us beyond our religion, as a Christian, I wish I can have a proper education on Islam. I had a chance of attending a program in New York and listen to a presentation by a Muslim. I nearly changed my religion that day. Yeah, my perception of what Islam used to be was completely different. So I think, because when you say ethics, being a Christian, the impression outside is that you want to promote Jesus' ethics. You understand? But when we know there are universal values, so if we can take time and find those common points, the commonalities between the teachings of Christianity and the teachings of uh, Islam and even our traditional religion, and come up with an interreligious education or interreligious studies, it may help us very, very uh, seriously in the days uh, ahead. So that, uh, they, like you have the Nairek or so, the, the Christian man there doesn't trust the Sultan. The Sultan doesn't trust the man who is in charge of uh, the Christian president or so. I think we need to grow beyond this uh, uh, interreligious suspicion and really get into a realm of uh, interreligious harmony and, uh, and cooperation. So, uh, Your Excellency, if you can use your good office to push further and get some of us who are religious educators to begin to develop some interreligious education curriculum. I'm sure if we do that for the country, we would have left behind something very, very serious. Well, not only for the country, it can then be, we can expand it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are already campaign at the international level for an interreligious council at the United Nations. So maybe we can also talk to the, U, uh, the AU for an interreligious council at the AU. And then in our own national assembly, in our own national assembly in Nigeria, there is no committee on interreligious affairs. So when issues come up, the parliamentarians don't have the capacity because there is no clear committee looking at the issue of religion. There is no ministry for religious affairs. And therefore, anybody does what he likes in the name of God who hardly speaks to us. People just get up and say, God have told him this, and they, they speak those things they want to speak. So if there are structures that can truly speak in, regulate, not to, just to regulate and what people <laughs> yeah speaking in tongues some of these miracles can we verify some of these miracles some of these donations in the name of god yeah let us uh, see how these donations to god are used by men uh, you know, there are a lot of issues that we must not ignore so i hope that your wonderful office can help drive this further thank you very much your excellency you are british there's a deliberate policy for community cohesion you know that if you are very much aware about how the West have been working towards bringing diverse communities together. Yeah. I live in Leicester, and it's the most multicultural city in Western Europe. Now, we've actually studied the application of inter-ethnic and religious cohesion across the world. We've come out with a template through a project that I've actually been consulting for in Nigeria, led by Stephanos Foundation. It is a bottom-up approach. If you mainstream discussion from the religious perspective, it is very flammable. So we are trying to look at ethnic identity and from a historical perspective and that which we have in common. Getting the people to discuss amongst themselves from the bottom-up. We don't trust politicians because we believe they are spinners. We don't trust our government because they have failed us in the past. But we, in the academia or in development practice, should begin to start the process from our various areas. Uh, we, will, we wouldn't waste most of your time, but we would like to share with you, I think on an individual level, about our approach. There is a study that we have come out with a template about how to engage. I'm from the Middle Belt and part of Nigeria. 
we are so numerous in tribes, but we lack cohesion. In the real sense of it, we are the majority, but we are looked at as a minority. So we introduced the Minority Interest Rights Project, in which we are trying to build community cohesion and ethnic relation. And uh, we also want, as an institute, uh, ICD, you know very well, you're into research and training. And uh, most of your research must have come out with findings. Uh, we are also researching about on the practices of what was in place, the, our, our previous practices, uh, culturally, traditionally from, from history. So we will be actually sharing it with ICD about the template we have created. We had a study across eight countries, and I was privileged to have actually studied the application of inter-ethnic relation and cultural diplomacy across eight nations in the world. And we'll be very happy to share it with you so that it might apply to you or not. But the cells are being built, and as I speak to you, it's, it's really working. We are getting a lot of response. And it is not government driven, so the people are owning it. But the community needs to take advantage of it and own it. You might apply it differently in Burundi. You might apply it differently in Mali. But we are tired of people telling our stories. It's time now for us to begin to tell our stories. And we all know very well that we have more in common than we have the difference. Because the common denominator that we all have as Africans is we have been stereotyped. We are a problem to be solved. And, and we need to begin to tell that story. And we are going to share this concept through networking and building cooperation to engage with one another, to share our common interest. We have a template which, if you are interested, we, might, we, are, we are ready to share with you to apply it in your communities. It cuts across every tribe. And we are also going to share it with ICD because there have been a lot of research work carried out and we have compared those and we have seen what has worked in other countries and what might be different. It's, it, we are happy to, 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 uh, to identify with you and uh, we, we will share this with you. And the MRAP project and template will be working. And some of you from Nigeria might want to key into it. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mobilization tsunami. And you are going to have a look at it and know exactly what we're talking about. So thank you very much and uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Inspiring to, to listen to you and very moving as well. I come uh, from, from Poland in Eastern Europe. You see in our country also a lot of uh, what, what you have been sharing here about the challenges of Nigeria. A lot of it uh, has also been our experience in Poland, in Eastern Europe, torn by wars and regimes. And uh, we were a colony of, of some other country, Germany, Soviet Union for for years, you know, 200 years of, of oppression altogether. So we are rebuilding now, re rebuilding our human capital. It's pr it will probably take another uh, generation or, or more. But um, I wanted to say that I was listening to you. I had a, a reflection that Europe itself, you see, is facing so many, chale so many challenges like um, uh, crisis, uh, financial crisis, lack of, co of cohesion, high unemployment, migrants problems connected with lack of integration. And Europe will not be able to, to solve those challenges, those problems, without your involvement, without the involvement of our African older brothers. And um, I also wanted to say that uh, there is a great need of intercontinental cooperation. So the, the, the theme of the conference is very adequate at all levels, because also Europe has a, a, a great commitment towards Africa because of the history. Uh, because of what had happened, you see, in the past. So there is a great need of, of our working together on creating development programs in communities, tr uh, transition, trans tr transition, transformation programs and centers, as you called it. We call it centers of new generation in communities. And we, as Poland and Eastern Europe, who share very much, very many of your challenges are happy to and committed to, to, to assist you and to help create programs not for Africa, but with Africa, with the involvement of local communities and them taking ownership of these projects from the very beginning. We would like to humbly share 25 years of experience of Poland, uh, fr free Poland, where civil society groups 
have been very involved in at, at the local level to re rebuild communities and I myself come from such background so yes this is what what I want bien je suis tellement ravi de joie pour avoir suivi euh, de brillants exposés Oui, je suis en train de ramasser les quelques mots, mais pour ce qui me concerne par rapport à, à un membre de l'Afrique, qui est le Nigeria, qui est le, Niger, le, Niger, le Nigeria, le membre qui est le Nigeria parmi dans les corps Afrique. Oui, euh, je me réalise que c'est les différentes cultures qui sont à la base des déchirements. Donc les différentes cultures. Donc à partir de tendances, obédiences religieuses. Moi, je pense que dans les pays, il y a un parlement. J'ai suivi mon frère parler de la société savante. Et puis la société civile. Mais moi, j'ajoute aussi le parlement. Parce qu'une fois voté, on se retrouve ensemble. Maintenant, on n'appartient on plus à une seule partie. On parle maintenant de l'intérêt supérieur de la nation. Donc, il serait mieux à ce que, en dehors de la société savante, en dehors de la société civile, qu'on y ajoute aussi le Parlement. Donc la société savante et la société civile peuvent arriver à convaincre les parlementaires afin d'être ensemble et voir l'intérêt supérieur de la nation. Bon, parfois il faut se dépasser hein, pour l'intérêt supérieur de la nation. Voilà un peu ma contribution par rapport à ce que je viens de suivre, par rapport à notre nation, le Nigeria. Je vous remercie. Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, especially Her Excellency. Thank you so much for coming. My name is George Ukwesi from Nigeria, from private sector. Um, That's something I noticed yesterday when I uh, came to United Nations, uh, uh, to the African Union uh, Secretariat. To the African Union Secretariat. It's a pity that after looking around, I couldn't see any of, of Nigerian youth around. Because I saw a lot of people from different countries representing their countries on youth on this AEU summit. And I wasn't happy that I didn't see much Nigerians there. Please, I want this thing to be taken care of. I'll take note of this. At next time, if uh, such organizations or, or summit uh, conferences are being held on this, on, on this magnitude, Nigerians must be involved, especially the youth. It's very, very important. And uh, if, if, yeah, if, even if it's few, you take care of them because some of them doesn't uh, have money to do this. But you take care of them. I was there yesterday, Ghanaians was paying for their own use. As, um, Ethiopia, a lot of countries, they paid for their use. But uh, these boys are just little, uh, very, very uh, just uh, in short, they don't have money. And this is supposed to be taken by Nigerian government. Please, I will appreciate if any other, other summit is to be concluded. Thank you very much. Well, before the microphone comes, uh, thank you so much indeed for your contributions. Is, uh, is here? Yeah, okay. <laughs>
Right, you see, just recently I was reading a paper, is it Times, Financial Times. There was a study globally about the values of the youth. And the conclusion was that, yes, indeed, many youths are getting into middle class uh, levels by the affluence made by inheritance, etc., by the hard work. But by the time they went through you know, the data of the values, they appear to be confused and lack direction. This is the global finding. So what we're saying is that this problem we are facing now is a, is a global issue. In Berlin, the elder statesman, the former president, was in Malta or oh, one of those Mediterranean countries. And he asked the question, as an old man, what has happened to our civilization? So he's not talking only to the Europe, he's also talking to the African nations. Now, talking about, we we'll just, I'll just leave certain things. One, let me just uh, repeat that we believe values, common values unite people. Values unite. Ethics that we call either good character in common everyday philosophical language, good character, or Sharia in Islam, or righteousness in Christianity. This, this word harmonizes people. Because if you are good here, you are good there, you are good there, you have that ethical common sense, common wisdom, to behave yourself and to prove indeed you are a person of integrity. You are a person that has uh, accountability, that you can have goodwill, and as well you can raise standards of the best and, and perpetually. The negative effect of uh, the social, generally, the, the, uh, of, uh, of the world on Nigeria and the young people. I agree very much with you, sir. I didn't want to touch that one because if I started that, that was going to fire up my emotions. But if we believe, we choose, because Africans are God conscious, we still use the word fear of God. Therefore, because of that, and let me go to the one sentence to the background. When the constitution of Nigeria was going to be reorganized, the Muslims struggled and got Sharia into the constitution. That means the foundation level where they can teach about Islam and constitutionally. The Christians were not organized, and there was not a word called righteousness. The, what we had, we had canon law. And I told the people, there is not a word, canon law, in the, in the Bible. Therefore, it cannot stand for everybody. The word that God keeps complaining about for and is defending is righteousness from Genesis to Revelation. But since there was no consensus, I wasn't quite close to the legislature. That is yet to be answered. But I make bold, and I insist, excuse my language, as a mother who is the receiving end of the negative aspect of lack of the, uh, the, 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 the compliance to Sharia or, or to righteousness or the truth or good character, that what the, the other statesman has mentioned here is the result of the complacency, the negligence of the Christian world or the general people, because the liberty we're talking about is what has led us to, to talk that, yeah, it is okay for, excuse me, women are to have their own identity. But the culture that is now coming to masculinizing the women appearance, I beg your pardon, this issue of wearing trousers tight to show where our, our private parts are, they are more or less more sexually suggestive dressing. Sometimes they look prostitutive. Sometimes, I beg your pardon, they look, they, uh, they look Jezebelic, like the characters we have in the hotel. So, believe me, and they are, they, 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 are, they are sexually suggestive to the point of making, dressing to kill the man. Somebody is busy in the office, you are dressing to distract the person to come have sex with you anytime. These are all some of these. And we are saying, and we are insisting, uh, uh, this is, I send it back to the National Assembly. If we have Sharia, these are the real problems we have Muslim versus Christians. And we are asking, now, at NIREC, what is Islam bringing to the table for the development of Nigeria? What is Christianity bringing to the table of Nigeria's development? What is, is traditional religion bringing to the table? Now, what is the Western information bringing to the table for our development? These are the questions we must ask.
I will ask this one, not at the highest level. And believe me, we will ask this question at the AU when I have the time. We will do it. So be assured. But talking about this, this negative influence, let the West and the East know that the influences to this social media content is creating problems for us. But it's up to us to deal with that electronic systems, the television, the system of blocking out this invading, is it uh, invading globalized right. pornography? Glo globalized uh, uh, commercialization of the figure of the woman. I thought if Mary or Mohammed's mother were a person, God would not use them to, to, bring, to give back to them. He used the body of the women to bring forth the, 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 the prophets we worship. Why would the body of the woman become so commercialized, masculinized? And now talking of the gay, the homosexuality, the men want to look more, wearing the earrings and looking like men, like women. So uh, uh, this, it is alien to Africans. We, and I repeat what I repeat again. In Berlin, I said, listen, people, understand us, accept us. We live in our villages, in our forests, etc., with our horses, with our chickens, with our dogs and everybody else. But we never saw... Horses, male horse, mating a male horse. No, a male dog, mating a male dog. Neither have we seen chickens messing around with themselves as like chicken hens, mother hens. And that, if this is our cultural psyche, that is the said, should be understood, accepted, and respected. And you know we have passed the law on anti-gay issues. Nigeria is not apologizing to anybody. And with the resources we have in Africa, we are simply saying that, look, whether anybody gives us aid or not, we will survive. We don't need the aid. We, it is up to us to say that what, if we think gayism is abomination by our religion, by our culture, leave us alone to manage ourselves. It is not the aid that has kept us, has sent us to school. We are telling the whole African, this is the message we should carry. We are telling the West, we are telling the East, because even our northern brothers are complaining seriously about homosexuality in the northern part. And you know the person who carried the issue in the National Assembly was a, was a Muslim. And he came out very strongly. So let it be known to the world. In Africa, leave us for goodness sake to live our natural life, decency according to even the instincts of the animals, keeping to their genders. And we think... Homosexuality in Africa is an abomination, as God has said in the Bible, and he has said in the Quran, and common sense will tell everybody. We are saying this, whatever those girls are doing, my brother, is a bad news, worse than what we have, what we have been saying. But I want to say that we are taking charge, and that's why we are going to the grassroots. We are not, we are not resting. And that's why sometimes we say that the British voice is a little bit abrasive to some people, but no apologies to nobody. Because I believe Africa, we Nigerians and Africans are teachable. We are changeable. We are developable. We are also transformable. This is the positive premise we come out with. As a mother, it makes total nonsense of my child labor with the blood we let at birth and the sanctity in, of our breast milk to be sold out to any liberalized, uncontrolled, well, no, no. Godless, uh, excuse my language. Godless, yeah. godless uh, 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 tendencies. And that is why the first lady, Her Excellency, was picked by ITU, International Technological Union, as the driver of the uh, anti, uh, uh, anti pornography, is that right? On the social media. And she's going to Mexico, she's going over the place. So I'm sorry to take your time. I think it's her time we went away to have a break and listen to somebody else. But this is the way I speak very humbly on behalf of Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The mothers of Nigeria and, and, the, and even the mothers of Africa, we must set the precedent to Africa and the world. What is the meaning of civilization? It is not the demeaning in dignifying the human species that we have labored, even at the point of dying at childbirth. The world cannot make nonsense of our biological, biosocial input into humanity as women. So when anything you are talking about marginalization and what is the abuse and the violation and, so on, and the rape and so on, it's because women are not talking. We are not many here. But I keep challenging the women. What do you think you are doing? Why do you commercialize your bodies? And truly, what are the future mothers supposed to be? 
what are the, uh, what is the, the, okay, talking of the summit. Yes, okay, summit, right? So, we are not, yes, I'm summarizing, I'm talking to the women now. Thank you, Essay. <laughs> no, let our leaders, let our, who are your politicians? Who are your counselors? Who are your governors? Who are your presidents? Who are your diplomats? We must begin to ask questions. Even we will lose the essence of being created at all. As parents, particularly as women. I'm not ending on the women. The issue of the youth, yes, indeed, is a challenge. We will tell the ambassador here, we will tell Mr. President, we will tell the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, Culture, as well as the Youth Department. We will accentuate your issues. And we will raise this matter at the AU and United Nations levels. Thank you so much.